What's going on everybody? I'm Jim with Straight Blast Pythons and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to talk about something a little bit different because as you can see, I'm joined today by my girl Sophitia and she is not a ball python. About eight, nine months ago now, I picked up a trio of Aspiditis ramsayi, better known as the Woma Python. And I've been talking about them here and there, I've mentioned them in some videos, but I haven't actually taken the time to formally introduce them. So the reason it's taken me so long to actually make this video introducing these guys to you is because the three of them can't seem to agree on a time when none of them are in shed. And to be honest, it's just gotten to a point where I've decided we're going to do it anyway. Especially seeing as just earlier this week, I picked up yet another species to add to the collection here at Straight Blast Pythons. I haven't introduced them yet on Instagram or made any sort of videos or reels, shorts, anything like that about them because to be honest, when they came in, they came in with mites and you know what, I'm not going to risk any sort of contamination of my main collection by bringing cameras or anything like that around them. You guys will see them in a couple of weeks once I know the actual infestation is cleared out because anybody who's dealt with that before knows how much it sucks to get mites in your collection. So always quarantine any new animals coming in, make sure you give them a thorough inspection. That's a little off topic, but I think it's really important to mention given the circumstances that we got going on here with our new animals that we just got in. Anyway, back to the Womas. So I started reworking my collection a little bit at the start of last year, and I always knew even before then that I wanted to bring in different species of python. Like I've said before, my goal was to be a keeper and breeder of pythons, not just ball pythons. That's why the name Straight Blast Pythons is pythons, not exotics, not serpents, not anything like that. It's pythons. And the Woma, the Carpet Python, and Short Tails were really the top of my list as to the things that I wanted to get into after I got my ball python collection established. And early last year when I started changing the collection around, I made the goal of adding at least one new species a year for the foreseeable future. And last year we picked up a trio of these guys, like I mentioned. So why Womas? Like I said, I wanted something a little bit different. And the three species that I was mainly looking at for the next expansion outside of ball pythons were Womas, Carpets, and short tailed very specifically the Sumatran short tails there. And I wanted something a bit different in feel to keeping and handling than ball pythons are. So I went ahead and kind of scratched short tails off the list for the time being. I do plan to get into them, but right now, or at least at that point in time, wasn't the top of my list because of my desire for something different. I guess a little bit of a, a boredom, wanting a species that is a little bit more interactive, a little more curious. Um, something that didn't just lay there so much. So that brought it down to the Womas or the Carpet Pythons. There was three real factors that decided why I would go with Womas over Carpets. And the first one really was just indecisiveness because I to this day can't tell you what type of carpets I really like the best. And I wanted to do a bit more research on the carpets before making a decision. I didn't want to just jump into a species just because I saw something that looked neat. So that was the first factor that kind of made a decision to go with the Womas. The girl's getting a little jumpy. Um, second was honestly a purpose. At the time that we were talking about this, uh, we had just came out of our first season of breeding and we had a number of um, unviable babies that we wound up having to find something to do with. They came out very kinked up. Um, one that just straight up didn't make it out of the egg. And we're not a big fan of having to cull. I'm just gonna be honest with that. And we, we really prefer the cycle of life. And so we were talking about getting a king snake just so that way any babies that we had in the future could at least contribute, even if it became the sense of just feeding the king snake. And um, when we started looking at this, Womas are also reptile eaters. They're actually primarily reptile eaters in the wild. So they do, while well, they do eat rodents, they, they serve that purpose as well. So it was it was kind of uh, a twofold, get into a new species that I liked and actually provide um, a function other than just being an animal to care for and breed in the future. They brought something else to the table. And then ultimately opportunity is what sealed the decision. So my wife at the time was working with a gentleman in the industry that most people around know him as Jim Bob, but he was actually the one who bred this girl and her sister. And he happened to have a non-related male in his possession that was originally produced by Dynasty, but he had possession of him at the moment. 
and we had the opportunity to pick up the trio all at once so it was kind of a combination of just like I said um, indecision on what type of carpet pythons I liked um, the fact that the Woma could play the same role as a king snake adding into the collection well bringing in another species of python and just the opportunity to get the trio all together so it was kind of just the cards lining up at the time that made the decision of the Woma that said I really, really enjoy this species. They're, they're kind of aloof, but curious at the same time, and it makes them very different. Like, some people describe them very similar to colubrids in the way that they handle and act. Um, we have corn snakes, I've handled king snakes, and, and I can kind of see the resemblance there, but these guys are really just m more curious and a little, a little more slow moving. As I say that, you know, she jerks back. But they are similar but not quite to a colubrid but I, I guess it's the closest thing that you're going to get to a colubrid type personality out of a python um at this point i think i'm really just rambling about the womas because this isn't supposed to be a species overview or a care guide if that's something that you would like to see though please let me know in the comments and i can work on something like that today i really just want to go ahead and introduce the three of them to you and really like i already did explain to you why we chose the woma for our next species so Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce these three, and we're going to call it from there. So this girl here, her name is Sophitia, and she's the one that you've been seeing me hold throughout the video and that I've been using B-roll of so far. She is the larger of the two girls. The two girls we got are both from the same clutch, so they are sisters. Like I said, the male is unrelated. Um, she's quite bright coloration-wise. Uh, she doesn't have the cleanest of belly, and I know some people do actually look for that in the Woma community so that may be you know off-putting to some but she actually when she's not in the shed is incredibly bright and one of the things I really do like about her and I don't know if the camera's picking it up at all is on her sides the coloration it's kind of like a pale mint color instead of the normal browns and you know yellows and beiges yes yeah, she has the the brown striping and everything but I'm talking just the base color underneath um, from my experience in taking pictures with her, it, it doesn't pick it up very well, and I, I guess that's probably something you got to see in person, and that may be something that's semi-normal amongst Womas. I haven't seen enough of them in person to say it is or not, but comparing her to her sister and the male we picked up, she's the only one that really has that coloration, so it's something I find very neat, and I'd like to see if she can actually pass down to her offspring in the future. Um, she is probably my favorite of the three if I'm being honest. She is very docile, she's got nice coloration, she eats well. I really don't gotta worry about her, you know, people say these Womas have a, a bitey, snappy personality and I haven't really experienced that yet, so if you're considering a Woma, seriously, they are phenomenal snakes, really easy to handle, eat really well, very hardy. But that's not part of the introduction, so let's keep moving here. So her sister here from the clutch is named Cassandra, and she is a little bit of a shy eater, so she's a bit smaller than Sophitia is. Um, my ultimate plan is just to breed one of these girls a year, kind of keep it a rotation, so her being a little smaller and growing up a little slower isn't the end of the world in my book. Um, she is brighter in coloration. When she is not in shed, she is by far the brightest of the three. She has an incredibly yellow head and an incredibly clean belly. I, I think that as far as people looking at like the standards of a Woma, she is probably the best of the three that we have. And I'm really also excited to see how bright of babies we can get out of her. But that said, the male that I'll show you in a few minutes, he's uh, relatively dark in color, so I don't know how that pairing is going to affect if I'm going to get some light, some dark, you know, everything kind of in between. It it'll be interesting to see. but. I'm not really looking to line breed this species or do any sort of crazy projects with them in terms of an ongoing thing. They are really more of a, a pet project for me. It is, like I said, an opportunity to work with another species. So I don't plan to be breeding these with the goal of producing holdbacks to make nicer and nicer animals. It's really just a opportunity to keep a less common species and the ability to maybe help with a little bit of outreach and get them a bit more common in the industry. You know, I was at the Tinley and ARBC about two weeks ago now at the time of recording this video, and I think I only saw two vendors at the whole show that had Womas, and one of which was just selling an adult male. So they're not that common for how awesome of a species they are. Um, 
And given the fact that they are an Australian species and what we have here is all we got, I kind of feel, you know, even if I'm not going to work them as a serious, you know, line breeding project, just to be, you know, getting some more out into the industry and kind of spreading information about them is, it's a good goal. And it's something that I want to do here with Straight Blast. And that's going to be kind of a common theme you're going to see with a lot of species that I add outside of the ball pythons. I'm not really looking into delving into a bunch of other crazy line breeding projects or morph chasing projects. That's what the ball pythons are for. These guys are really just to have an awesome species and change things up a little bit because there are so much out there outside of the ball pythons that we all obsess over and it's just kind of a shame not to enjoy other aspects of the hobby other species and especially stuff like this that you don't see as often not saying that they're rare but how many people do you know that have a woma all right so rounding out our trio we got our male here his name is siegfried and like i said he's not related to these other two girls he was produced by dynasty he is a little bit more aggressive than these two i'm not saying that he's like jumping out of his enclosure trying to get me every time although he has done that a couple times when he was younger he's just very cage defensive he'll hiss at you a lot he'll kind of give you those warnings and he really doesn't have the patience to be handled for a long period of time kind of like sophitia here who while this video might only be a couple minutes long if you have any idea how many times i've reshot this video i've had her out for about 20 or 30 minutes now and she's still calm as can be so I couldn't do that with him. He's a little bit different of a personality, but I still wouldn't say that he's hard to handle. He's just one that you need to keep an eye on a little bit more. Again, with him being darker and them being lighter, I'm kind of curious to see what's gonna happen with their offspring in a few years. I'm assuming I'm probably just gonna wind up with a variety, some light, some dark, but we'll see. I'm not gonna align breed like I said, but I'm not gonna keep rambling about him. Like I said, this video was mainly an introduction if you're interested in something along the lines of a care guide or a more detailed actual species breakdown, I might consider doing one of those in the future. Let me know in the comments below. But I feel that there's enough species breakdowns on these guys out there already. And there's a bit of a uh, differing opinion on how to properly keep these guys. I've seen some people keeping them, you know, in tubs in our rack system. Some people saying that they have to have a bigger you know pvc setup usually the three by two or four by two setups um that's a whole different debate and i'm planning on eventually moving them up to three by two by twos or four by two by twos right now as they're growing they are in a rack system but they're very active animals so i don't think that i'll keep them there forever what do you guys think about the woma pythons um you guys have any experience with them I'm really kind of learning with them as I go still. Like I said, I've had them for about eight to nine months now and they're growing great. They're healthy. They're fun to work with. Even my daughters love them, you know, so that should tell you right away. People say that they're bitey and aggressive and my three and six year olds can handle them just fine. So there's nothing wrong with them. So what do you think about them? Again, let me know. Next video, we'll be back to our regular scheduled ball python content. I'll see you then.